This video will show how to geo-rectify or register and crop images. In addition, we'll show how to create world files for these rectified and cropped images that are useful when used in conjunction with GIS software. The most common reason for geo-rectification and cropping involves draping images over three-dimensional surfaces. There are, however, other reasons for geo-rectifying and cropping images, but for now, we'll focus on preparing an image for subsequent surface draping via the Images Drape program. This is because the Drape program assumes that the edge coordinates for the image that is to be draped correspond to the dimensions of the surface grid. Now by image, we mean any bitmap or raster file such as BMP, PNG, JPG, and TIFF. These files most commonly represent satellite imagery and aerial photographs, but they may also contain other maps that have been scanned and thereby converted to bitmaps. So let's dig in. Locate the Rectify option from within the imagery menu and click on it. You will now be presented with the image rectification menu. I'll quickly traverse the menu options and then walk through an example. The input file is the name of the original image that is to be calibrated, rotated, and optionally clipped. The output file is the name for the calibrated, rotated, and optionally clipped image that will be created by this program. This is the file that you'll be using within the Drape program. Be sure that the output file does not have the same name as the input file. Otherwise, you run the risk of permanently ruining your original image. A world file is a tiny little file that has the same name as the original file, but with a slightly different extension. World files contain information about the image coordinates and orientation. GIS programs use world files to determine where and how to plot the associated image file. These files eliminate the drudgery of manually typing in the image coordinate information every time an image is used within an application. There are two different standards for creating world file names. One of these conventions is to add a W to the name of the image file. For example, if the output file is named 1973projectxairphoto.jpg, then the world file will be named 1973projectxairphoto.jpg. W. The other world file naming convention is to use the first and last characters of the image file name extension followed by a W. For example, if the output file is named 1973projectxairphoto.jpg, then the world file will be named 1973projectxairphoto.jgw. This latter, older convention goes back to the days when file extensions were limited to three characters. By the way, the handful of RockWorks applications that read world files will recognize either convention. The calibration point coordinates represent three points for which the coordinates are known. These three calibration points must also be points that you can point to with certainty on the input image. You'll be entering the coordinates for these points within this menu and clicking on them within the input image later on. Please note that these points must not lie upon a line. In fact, for optimum results, try to make the calibration points form an equilateral triangle whose vertices are as far apart from each other as possible. Next up is the Clip Image option. There are two ways to define the clipping rectangle. The first method is to use the project dimensions, meaning that once the calibration and rotation process has been completed, RockWorks will trim the image such that the edges correspond to the project dimensions. This is the setting that you'll probably want to use if you're preparing an image for draping. The second method is to manually specify the clipping borders. The list image dimensions within Windows Notepad option simply saves the image dimensions in a text file that might come in handy if you lose track of the image dimensions. The remaining options provide shortcuts to other RockWorks applications, 
such as plotting the rectified image in 2D, draping the image over a 3D surface, and floating the image as a flat plane in 3D. Okay, so that's the overview, and now it's time for an example. The best place to start is by specifying your project dimensions. This is very important because we'll be using the project dimensions to crop the rectified image such that it only shows our project area. Now, consider this air photo that includes the project area as shown by the red rectangle. Notice that the air photo is not oriented north-south. The first step is to find three points where I know the coordinates. In this example, Let's assume that we're working in UTMs, or Universal Transverse Mercator Coordinates. One way of obtaining coordinates is to find three features on a USGS topo that correspond to this air photo and read the coordinates off the topo map. Another method would be to visit the site with a GPS and get the coordinates for three points that are easily identified on the image. Let's assume that we got the coordinates for three points as shown here using one of these two methods. The next step is to activate the Rectify program and do the following. Enter the name for the large, original, unrectified, unclipped image. In my case, that's Large Harbor Image 05.png. Next, we enter the name for the rectified image that we'll be creating. I've named that Site Image 01.png. Remember, Never name the output file with the same name as the input file unless you're a glutton for punishment. Although I don't really need it for draping, I've activated the world file option using the W extension convention. This will make life easier if I want to pull the rectified image into a GIS program later on. Notice that I've entered the UTM coordinates for the three calibration points. Because the input image is so much larger than the project area, I'll clip it by using the project dimensions that I typed into the main menu. These dimensions correspond to the red rectangle that I showed in the first air photo image. Finally, I've chosen to show the output as a two-dimensional map within the rock plot 2D window. Press the process button and we'll see the calibration screen. Our initial input image is now displayed at a default scale whereby one pixel within the image corresponds to one pixel on your computer screen. This will probably be too much, in which case you can reduce and enlarge the image scale by clicking on the buttons in the upper left corner of the screen. The slider bars along the base and right side of the screen will allow us to move around the image if we're zoomed in. Notice that the prompt at the top of the screen is telling us to digitize calibration point number one. So let's do just that. I'll move down to my first calibration point and position the crosshair cursor as closely as I can to the actual location. I click the mouse and two things happen. First, a small label appears letting me know that the program has recorded that point. Secondly, the prompt at the top of the screen is now telling me to digitize calibration point number two. So I move over to the point number two location, position the cursor, and click the mouse button. The program now labels point number two and prompts me to digitize point number three. So I move up to point number three, position the cursor, and click the mouse button. After a few seconds, we'll see the new, rectified, rotated, clipped image that perfectly corresponds to my project dimensions. Technically, we're done in regards to rectifying and clipping, but let's go ahead and drape this image over a gridded terrain model. But, before we get into this, please note that there's a separate video within the Rockware YouTube How-To section titled, how to drape an image over a surface model that shows how to use the drape program in excruciating detail. The first step is to load the drape program from the imagery menu. Next, we set the image name to the name of the rectified image. Then, we define the surface grid over which the image is to be draped. 
we press the process button and pour ourselves a pint of Guinness to make a toast to the poor souls in that sinking ship. Thanks for watching.